Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian Zipsy. It's good to be here with you at Horse Center. I am still in uh, Saratoga for another weekend or so. There you go, Matt. I love when you're on the scene there at the spa, and we're going to talk lots of spa. We're also going to talk a little bit about Del Mar. This is a uh, three-year-old Philly division of Horse Center, if you will, Matt. But first, we want to take a look at the Travers because the Travers is right around the corner. We're only nine days out as we're filming this, Matt. The Travers Stakes is shaping up to be a pretty good one, a pretty important one as we get into the uh, the race for an Eclipse Award. Let's look at the uh, probables as of now. It looks like Angel of Empire has been taken off this list, Matt. We added a long shot ear, Il Miracola. Uh, right now, it's shaping up as a field of nine. Of course, this could change next week. They draw the drivers on Tuesday. Matt, we have the three horses that won races in the Triple Crown Series this year. None of them will be favored. Yeah, that's a, th th I think that all adds up to, Brian, that it is a pretty good field that we're looking at in the Travers. Yeah, absolutely. Forte, uh, Forte has only lost one race, Matt, uh, going back uh, to this time last year. Uh, he became a grade one winner at Saratoga in the hopeful stakes, and he's won six of seven since then. Of course, he's the two-year-old champion. Had to miss the derby and the preakness with that slight hoof bruise came back with a good race and his only loss when he was second in the belmont but finishing well in that 12 furlong belmont came back with a hard fought victory in the gym dandy he looks like a legitimate favorite on uh, a week from saturday yeah absolutely brian and and as it's been uh, all through the year, it, it's been a wide open year in the three-year-old division, three separate winners in the Triple Crown races, Forte, yeah, uh, <clears throat> showing his stuff early on and then and then uh, coming back later in the year. Um, I guess the tra that means the Travers is a big, big race in deciding the division championship. Yeah, it absolutely should be. Um, there, there are some horses, uh, one horse for sure in Southern California, maybe a couple of horses out in Southern California that might still have something to say about it that won't be at the Travers. Go Rocket Ride, practical, uh, practical Move is coming back as well. Interesting horses out there, but the Travers is shaping up as a big one, and the winner of the Travers certainly could be the Eclipse Award winner at the end of the year. Archangelo, Matt, uh, Sana Arrogate, uh, Jenna Ant uh, Antonucci became the first female trainer of a Triple Crown uh, winner. Uh, nice story. Hasn't run since the Belmont, but this Sana Arrogate was looking better and better and, of course, had that nice Belmont win where he uh, shot through on the rail and was best Belmont Stakes Day. Yeah, and uh, of course, Javier Castellano had to make a decision about who he was going to ride in the Travers. Was it going to be Archangelo or was it going to be the Kentucky Derby winner, Mage? And Javier did opt to uh, ride Archangelo. Yeah, that's a very interesting decision, an important decision. Uh, Castellano won two thirds of the Triple Crown this year with two different horses, and he's getting off the Derby winner. <laughs> I think the Derby winner is a really good horse. So, Interesting horse uh, decision by Castellano, but you can't blame him at all. Archangelo's won three in a row. Mage, on the other hand, Matt, has not won since the Kentucky Derby, but Mage was a, uh, I thought, a good, uh, two good performances since the Derby. Uh, paceless Greekness he chased, finished third, and then uh, Haskell uh, made a big move that was reminiscent of his race before the Kentucky Derby which was the Florida Derby where he made a big move and got beat late by Forte. Uh, Go Rocket Ride turned him away in the stretch at Monmouth Park. But uh, I think Mage is working his way to another good performance here at 10 Frogs. And of course, the distance that he won the Derby. Yeah, and I think uh, the connections feel the, way, it's the same way. But you can't deny that the specter of uh, Kentucky Derby winner uh, not winning any other races uh, is hanging a little bit in the background. Hanging a little bit in the background, but I like Mage as a 
better derby winner than a lot we've seen in the last few years, Matt. Louis Saez, by the way, is picking up the mount on Mays, so uh, he's getting a very good rider who knows his way around the Travers trip for sure. The other Triple Crown race winner in the field is one of two for Bob Baffert. That's National Treasure. Uh, Son of Quality Road, he's won a lot of good races against graded stakes horses, but the Preakness is his only win outside of a maiden win, and he did have the benefit of a pretty dawdling pace that day at Pimlico. Yeah, I think that's a good point, Brian, uh, uh, to, about National Treasure in here, and I think all you uh, Bob Baffert fans, you're probably going to get a pretty good price. Yeah, pretty good price as the fourth choice, the likely fourth choice of the Let's call him the big four here in the Travers. Uh, his other horses reincarnate, who's an interesting horse, a horse who also has some speed, a horse who seems game, didn't do a whole lot in the Kentucky Derby, but he bounced back nicely with a win last time. Yeah, I, I agree with that, Brian, for sure. Um, it'll, it's interesting that there will be two Bob Bafferts in the Travers field, and neither one of them is going to be close to favoritism. Neither one, and both of them will probably be close to the early pace, though. So it'll be interesting to see how the early pace of the Travers unfolds. A horse that won't be on the early lead certainly is Tappet Trice. Matt, you have to draw a line through that, Haskell. If you like Tappet Trice, you're going to get odds finally on Tappet Trice. Uh, a multiple graded stakes winner ran a very good Belmont, was lapped right on Forte in the Belmont. Just did not get it done. Nine furlongs, a little bit of traffic at Monmouth Park in the Haskell. Yeah, certainly he's a horse that uh, the mile and a quarter distance would seem to certainly be in his favor. Disarm is another horse who probably has a shot in here. Disarm uh, actually was my pick to upset the Jim Dandy. He was only fourth, but he was only beaten a few lengths. Have to move forward a little bit, but uh, he's uh, not out of the picture. Yeah, I agree, Brian, and I think that Disarm has got his fair share of supporters. Another one, horse we should talk about, I think Il, Il Miracola is the is the true long shot of the field, but Scotland, Scotland's an up-and-comer for trainer Bill Maude, and we've seen up-and-comers from Bill Maude before do big things, Matt. Yeah, and, and Bill Maude just continues to be uh, the Hall of Famer that he's been for so many years, uh, uh, winning big races uh, at Saratoga, having another great summer. With that in mind, you, you've got to keep an eye on Scotland. Yeah, if you're one of those people who thinks this three-year-old crop is just beating each other, I mean, I, I talked about how good Forte's record is, and Arch Archangelo has won three in a row. But if you're, if you're one of those people that think the three-year-old crop is not all that strong, a horse like Scotland, give him a second look here under the tutelage of Hall of Famer Bill Mott. All right, Matt, that's our early look at the Travers. We're going to be talking a lot about the Travers, of course, next week on Horse Center. But this show is three-year-old Phillies, three-year-old Phillies, Matt, one of the best, of course, in the country, wet paint. This Philly, this Godolphin-owned uh, and bred Brad Cox-trained Philly has won four stakes races already this year, Matt. You don't see that a lot uh, these days. No, you certainly don't. Uh, um, and won uh, three of those stakes races uh, on the road to the Kentucky Oaks, where he went into that uh, – race as as a horse that was frankly expected to win ended up fourth and and, and came back from uh, from from that race uh in the monomoy girl stakes which was a prep race for wet paint at ellis park and then at saratoga uh wet paint uh, that winning wet paint that became so familiar got back uh, in the winner's circle when uh, she was impressive winning the coaching club American Oaks. Yeah, she was impressive. She didn't win by months, but uh, she had a lot of work to do in the stretch and Defining Purpose ran a big race that day and for wet paint to run her down and get up. It was a nice performance over the track, same distance. Uh, four stakes wins already this year. The first three, of course, as you mentioned, came at Oakland Park. I, I didn't think either of her losses were bad. She was close in the Kentucky Oaks in a big field, uh, beating a couple lengths. And then the Monomoy girl, of course, who's your Philly 
dominated the early pace and wet paint came rallying for second. Wet paint is a deserving favorite here and the one to beat. But as you can see, uh, unlike a lot of stakes at Saratoga this summer, we have a nice uh, deep field here with lots of potential horses. Matt, let's talk about the one just a little bit. George Weaver brings us Sacred Wish, a horse who flashed in talent early in his career, early in her career. Um, had some hiccups maybe along the way, but uh, she came up big in the coaching club American Oaks and looks to repeat that type of performance on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. Uh, um, uh, we're talking about we're talking about defining purpose. Is that right? Sacred wish. The, ah, uh, excuse me, Brian. Got distracted from it. Sacred wish. Uh, yeah, absolutely. For George Weaver, uh, George Weaver is sort of a Mister. Uh, Saratoga, uh, he, he saves his best for the spa and, and is having another very good uh, meeting and, and good reason to uh, consider Sacred Wish as a serious contender. Uh, Johnny V gets up, uh, was second, as you mentioned, in that coaching club, American Oaks, uh, second in uh, an allowance race at, uh, at Belmont Park. And uh, before that was didn't have a particularly good run in the Black Eyed Susan, but also has it as a second in the Gulfstream Park Oaks earlier in the year. So some good performance uh, may be due to get back to the winner's circle. Yeah, it, it, she's a threat if she runs back to that coaching club American Oaks. This is a deeper field and probably more speed. In fact, I, I think I'm pretty confident saying there is more speed in the Alabama than there was in the coaching club American Oaks, but uh, a threat off that performance for trainer George Weaver. The three, Matt, going down the list here, Julia Shining is a very interesting horse, a very well-bred horse, of course, as we know, Dreaming of Julia and Curlin Mating produced this filly. And she's only had four lifetime starts. She's winless this year after uh, getting up in it to, to win the grade two Demoiselle late last year. Uh, much talked about, well-liked filly. Uh, I don't think her races this year are bad. Maybe she just needs a strong pace. Maybe she leads a little bit of maturity. Here she is after about four months off since running a close-up third in the Ashland. Yeah, and, and like you said, Brian, uh, 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 that was a good effort in the Ashland uh, where she was third. Uh, um, and I, I, I kind of like the fact that Julia Shining has been off since April. I guess there are others will say we'll take that as a negative, but I'm kind of taking it as uh, Todd Pletcher saying, you know, I think this young three-year-old filly, lightly raced three-year-old filly, needed a little bit more time, a little bit more time to mature. And if that, in fact, is what Pletcher's doing and that the three months or so could really help Julia Shining uh, step up to the potential and step up to that fantastic pedigree that we know she has. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with you here, Matt. I, you, Todd Pletch is very good at, at running horses fresh. And this is a filly probably who still had some uh, uh, growing, some maturity to do after the Ashland four months ago. So she's back. I, I kind of would like to see her a little farther off the pace than she was in her first two races, which did not have a ton of pace. She'll get more pace to run at here. Let's take a look at the time form US pace projector as we do on Horse Center. And they're talking about a fast pace here. Uh, they have uh, randomized one of the uh, Chad Brown fillies out there early, but uh, I think there are other candidates as well, including, yeah. the Ashland winner, including the Ashland winner, Defining Purpose, Chocolate Gelato, uh, Sacred Wish was close to the pace in the Oaks. So this might be a race where it sets up a little bit for a filly like Dreaming, uh, I'm sorry, Julia Shining to make a uh, late run. Yeah, and and certainly not just Julia Shining, but the other horses that prefer to come off the pace also, especially when you're going to be going that mile and a quarter distance. Uh, nine furlongs, nine furlongs nowadays with the Alabama, but uh, yeah, it's it's still a, a pace that should set up well for the uh, 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 horses that like to come from off the pace. Um, of course, Wet Paint, the favorite that we talked about a little bit, is uh, is one of those horses. Gambling Girl, the other Pletcher horse, another one perhaps Tax from Kenny McPeak is a filly that could rally as well. Uh, let's go down this list a little bit more, Matt, as we look at uh, our odds for it. Sabra Tuff looks like a, another long shot for trainer Dallas Stewart. 
uh, fire line is one of two from trainer Chad Brown. Chad Brown, uh, she uh, was a disappointment last time in the Delaware Oaks, but looks like she has some potential if she can bounce back from that race. Yeah, lightly raced, but but flashed some talent in, in a couple of those races. Uh, and then, as you mentioned, they did make the jump up to Graded Stakes Company in the Delaware Oaks. wasn't particularly strong field, um, you know, and it was interesting that the uh, – the, the two Chad Brown horses were relatively late uh, additions to this uh, Alabama field, which looked like for a while it was going to be a field of six. But with the addition of the Chad Browns and a couple of others, we, we got a field of 10. So everybody that's been complaining about small fields and mistakes at uh, Saratoga will have to take a break from that, at least for this one on Saturday. Yeah, that's true, Matt. And uh, uh, both uh, uh, Chad Brown fillies look like horses that have some potential. Uh, I'm just not sure if they're ready to win a race like this. I want to uh, apologize. I, I saw somewhere that the Alabama had moved to nine furlongs. It is, in fact, 10 furlongs. Uh, so, Matt, you're right. 10 furlongs still is the Alabama, which is what we're used to. Uh, at Saratoga for this uh, big race for three-year-old fillies. Chocolate gelato stretching out to 10 furlongs, Matt. I, I wonder if Todd Pletcher has her in here a little bit to set the table. I, I don't think so, but that's might that's what might end up happening with Chocolate Gelato, who's a great one winner at two. She's only had one race so far, though, as a three-year-old. Yeah, Chocolate Gelato's an interesting horse. Boy, she looked like... Uh... Uh, she was going to be a really good one last year, uh, had a great, uh, great two-year-old campaign that sent her to the Breeders' Cup for the Juvenile Phillies and, and was one of the top choices uh, in that race, but she really didn't do any running that day. Yeah, Chocolate Gelato should be another one that makes this pace solid. The other Pletcher that we haven't talked about yet is Irad Ortiz Jr.'s mount. That's Gambling Girl. She ran a big race to rally for second, a strong second in the Kentucky Oaks. She had some time off, came back in the coaching club Oaks, was maybe a little closer to the pace than she wanted to be, and the New York Red Philly kind of fizzled there to be a well-beaten third behind wet paint. Yeah, so an interesting horse, Brian, in that, you know, she's run some very good races and some very big races, as you mentioned, like in the in the Kentucky Oaks, but an interesting horse in that she seems to uh, uh, not want to get to the winner's circle uh, uh, much. It's been a long time since she had a victory. I think it's going back to September, and that victory was in a New York bred stakes race. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, the seconds and thirds that she has been uh, been piling up have been in good, strong fields. Yeah, and that Kentucky Oaks was a big performance. She was uh, getting to the winner there in the stretch. So maybe 10 furlongs with a stronger pace. Arad Ortiz on number seven, Gambling Girl, one of three for Todd Pletcher. Matt, we uh, also should talk a little bit more about the other Chad Brown filly that's randomized. Randomized is coming off a stakes win. Like her entry mate, she's lightly raised, got a lot to prove, but she is coming off a stakes win over the track at Saratoga. Yeah, absolutely. And that, and that uh, stakes win at Saratoga is probably what got uh, Chad Brown to think about running her in the Alabama. Of course, before that, she ran in the Acorn and finished sixth and wasn't particularly competitive on that day. But I guess I guess she took a liking to Saratoga. Yeah, maybe she liked Saratoga. Uh, she certainly liked one mile against lesser competition than she'll see here. Number nine, taxed. Uh, Trainer uh, Kenny, uh, I'm sorry, Randy Morris has a nice filly here who's run a lot of good races. Taxed um, won the Black Eyed Susan a couple starts back where she rallied strongly by Who's Your Filly in the stretch. That was an impressive looking stretch run from Taxed. She hasn't been able to get by wet paint in a bunch of tries, but uh, that Black Eyed Susan was very good. She bounced back with a pretty nice second last time in the Indiana Oaks. She's another filly that could rally a bit here on uh, on saturday at saratoga yeah i, I agree brian a, a, a nice resume uh shipping into saratoga you mentioned she hasn't been able to get past wet paint but you know what brian i don't think anybody in this field has been able to get by wet paint uh, a lot of them 
uh, have been beaten by wet paint in that, you know, in those four wins that we've talked about. Yeah, that's true. I guess Gambling Girl beat her in the Kentucky Oaks. She's one filly that did it, but yeah, you're right. Uh, you look at a lot of these fillies and a lot of these fillies with a chance and they have been beaten by wet paint, wet paint during uh, their careers. Another one that's been beaten by wet paint is the 10 defining purpose. Like Tax though, she looks to be in good form. She's won two of her last three. I guess the Oaks she faded out of a little bit. But before that, she had the big win at Keeneland, the grade one Ashland. And then uh, last time, she was a solid winner, overtaxed in the Indiana Oaks. Yeah, again, two very nice wins. And she is one of three grade one winners in this field. Absolutely. It's a, it's a nice field overall and a lot of Phillies with a chance. We're going to change gears, Matt, as we go west next. We're going to go to Del Mar, another grade one race for three-year-old Phillies. This one, though, is on the grass. Let's take a look at the Del Mar Oaks field. Uh, some of the best young turf Phillies in the country fill out another deep field, a field of 10 here in the Del Mar Oaks. So uh, this one is nine furlongs. That's what I was thinking, I guess. The Del Mar Oaks nine furlongs on the grass at Del Mar. Uh, we have certainly a favorite, I think. There is a mistake here in this morning line. Window shopping should be the second choice. Uh, so that was a mistake having her at six to one. She will be the second choice, we believe, behind Anisette. Anisette is the one to beat, Matt. Leonard Powell got this filly from England after some promising races on all weather surfaces. She's looked really good in two turf races in Southern California. Yeah, and, and actually uh, uh, she came over from Europe and her last win in Europe was also a victory. So she's on a three race winning streak uh, uh, and has looked good do, uh, doing so. She's doing it with as a very, very deep closer. Yeah, she likes to she likes to run her uh, do her best running late, Matt. But Del Mar is one turf course, especially where I like horses coming from off the pace, and Anisette fills that bill nicely here. Although another one who likes to come off the pace is the horse I said should, will be the second choice. That's Window Shopping, uh, Richard Mandela, as we've become accustomed to, especially at Del Mar in the summertime is uh, always one of the trainers to beat out there. And this race is no different. He's got two interesting fillies. Let's talk about window shopping who made her debut on the turf, but has switched to dirt and she's looked more and more promising as she's gone, uh, coming out of a win, a grade two win, uh, like the favorite Anna said, hers came on the dirt in the summertime Oaks. Yeah, and it, it's an interesting field, Brian, in that there are, you know, there are a handful of horses that are pretty much firm turf horses. They've most or all of their career starts on the turf. There are, there's a few horses in there who are making their first career start on the turf. And then you've got some like uh, window shopping who are just now starting to show their best after a couple of races uh, on the grass. That was a nice win on the summertime in the summertime Oaks. And before that she was third in the Santa Anita Oaks. Yeah, she was third in the San Anita Oaks. She might have had a little trouble that day, too. So a very promising up-and-coming filly for Mandela. And obviously, he has some confidence in her switching to the turf as he started her career on turf. And, and she did make up some ground that day, maybe not completely ready to run in her career debut. The other Mandela horse and another horse who's in with a shot certainly is Ruby Nell. Uh, Ruby Nell has a nice turf record, and now she's won two in a row on the grass. Uh, two different tracks, and she's got much more tactical speed than the first two we talked about. Yeah, and I guess that kind of gives uh, <clears throat> Mandela a nice one-two punch with a, off the pace and a more forwardly placed uh, horse. And, you know, uh, uh, Richard Mandela doesn't put horses into big races unless he thinks that they have a reasonable chance to run well. Yeah, and I think both of these certainly do. Let's take a look at the Timeform U.S. Pace Projector again, Matt. Uh, it doesn't have that fast pace button, but I think it'll be a pretty solid pace. I think there's some fillies here who will show speed. Led, of course, by number seven, Big Pond. Big Pond is a stakes winner in only two starts. She's unbeaten. She's a Calbred, and she's run against Calbreds, running shorter on dirt. But she's shown a lot of speed, a lot of <clears> talent. 
She's got some turf breeding. Big Pond is another one we need to talk about a little bit here. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. A lot of speed. And as you mentioned, uh, uh, the breeding says she should be uh, she should like the turf. So uh, speed is always dangerous, but you know, she's going to have to stretch out in distance and take to the turf uh, for the first time. Yeah, yeah. Tough spot for your turf debut, but Big Pond looks like a talented filly. Uh, the pace projector has uh, Ruby Nell right there in second, but I think the number eight, who's a real long shot, absolutely zero. She's actually a stakes winner for trainer Doug O'Neill, uh, but she's been sprinting on the dirt. She's been fading out of races pretty badly of late, but I think I think I, I would be surprised. Let's say it this way. I'd be surprised if she's not out there pressing the pace as a long shot on Saturday. Yeah, and, and this is, will be her first start on the turf. Um, yeah, and and uh, uh, didn't show much speed the last couple of times, but maybe it was because she, she just didn't get out of the gate very well. But, you know, uh, that raises some concerns also. Yeah, yeah, I think I think she'll be a pace prompter at the very least on Saturday, but a, a long shot to be sure. Let's go back to the field of the Delmar Oaks and talk about some more contenders in here, Matt. One horse I think could be a contender and might have better odds than that five to one is number six. Her name is Impact Warrior. Uh, coming over for Europe, Phil D'Amato, who is uh, just been on a tear uh, at Del Mar and uh, even Santa Anita going to be farther back. Phil D'Amato winning tons of races out in Southern California lately. Impact Warrior made a nice uh, uh, debut in Southern California, although she was second in an allowance race for older fillies in her American debut. Yeah, and I think it's important to note that Brian uh, that it is her was her first American debut. Uh, she's always run on the turf. She ran four times uh, in Ireland. Trainer Phil D'Amato is known as a good turf trainer, and and maybe that allowance was an a learn a learning experience for that horse, you know, the different different pace style, pace scenarios in American turf racing as opposed to over in Ireland. Absolutely. I, I think she's one to, to look out for in the Delmar Oaks. Let's see if her odds get a little bit higher. Kenta Sormo up on Saturday. Uh, there are others in here, Matt, all of who have some credentials. Infinite Diamond, Mike Smith up. She's got some tactical speed and she probably has some class. Be Your Best and Parasecret are both previous uh, stakes winners on the grass. Uh, maybe not showing their absolute best late, uh, lately, but if Parasecret bounces back with Joe Bravo or Be Your Best likes the surroundings coming from the East Coast, they're dangerous as well. Yeah, that's a, that certainly is an interesting sh ship from East to West by uh, by Horacio De Paz. Uh, uh, um, so he, he must have a feeling that... Uh, that horse is probably going to run better than her last couple races point out. Yeah, she's she's got some class. She's kept good company. By the way, those odds on the morning line there should be 10 to 1, not 30 to 1 on Be Your Best. Uh, so a bunch of interesting horses in here, Matt. Uh, it's good to see nice, deep, solid fields, 10 horse fields. And uh, there are, are several potential winners in each race. It's time to make our top picks for these races. I'm going to let you go first. We're going to start on the East Coast where you are with the historic Alabama, mile and a quarter Alabama stakes at Saratoga on Saturday. All right, Brian. Uh, uh, yeah, it's an interesting, it turned out to be an interesting field when it when it was drawn and, and 10 uh, three-year-old fillies showed up. Uh, um, wet paint, you know, it's hard to poke holes in wet paint, except that she's probably going to be a pretty heavy favorite in there and certainly should. Um, I'm going to take a shot against that Brad Cox runner, uh, Brian. Um, we'll see if she can put together two big grade one wins at Saratoga. I'm going to go with Julia Shining. I, I, I like that Todd Pletcher has given her a little bit of time and uh, after that third place in the Ashland. And I think she's going to come out running. And certainly with her pedigree, the 10 furlongs is going to be really in her favor. I agree with you, Matt. I'm on Julia Shining as well. I, I do want to take a shot at wet paint as a clear favorite. 
going 10 furlongs here. Julia Shining is bred to go the distance. She also should be farther off the pace for the first time this year. And I too like the fact that Pletcher era gave her some time and now is bringing her back in a big spot. Julia Shining uh, could be the second choice, could be even a little bit higher than that. But Wet Paint should be the clear favorite in this 10 horse field in the Alabama. In the Del Mar Oaks map, Looks like we have the two favorites, but you're you're going with the second choice. Yeah, I am, Brian. Uh, Anna said is certainly the horse to beat. Um, a terrific record uh, that she brings in, um, but likely to be a heavy favorite in here. So I am going to go with uh, window shopping, Brian. How you know? I'm talking about a Richard Mandela trainee coming off a big victory. Yeah, Mandela. You, you've been on Mandela lately, and it's uh, paid off for you, Matt. Window shopping certainly has a big chance. I think this field might be uh, sneaky tough, though, these turf horses as she switches from turf. But I like Anisette Bass. I really like what she's done. I, I think this race is set up to rally. Both of them can rally, but Anisette has that uh, turn of foot down the stretch that's really impressive. Loved what she did in the San Clemente last time, so she'll be my top pick in the Del Mar Oaks. Well, folks, there you have it. A, a early look at the Travers and two big three-year-old Philly grade one uh, Philly races from either coast. Hope you enjoyed the show. But before we go, let me get a parting shot from my friend, Matt Schiffman there on the East Coast. Absolutely, Brian. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 great racing this weekend on both coasts for the three-year-old Phillies. Uh, so play them both or pick your coast. Uh, uh, and our first look at the Travers, we'll have more Travers uh, certainly coming up with the big race, uh, uh, not this weekend, but the weekend after. Yeah, yeah. Next weekend, we're talking Travers. Weekend after that, Pacific Classic. So a lot to talk about. I want to thank all of you for watching. We certainly appreciate it. Thanks to our uh, friend in the home office, Candace Curtis, for the race graphics. Derby Wars, the best contest site out there, our sponsor. And of course, Timeform US for their pace projectors. But most of all, thank you to uh, all of you for watching this week. As always, uh, if you haven't yet uh, uh, subscribed, please do that to the Horse Racing Nation channel here on YouTube and uh, turn on those notifications. Leave us a comment. And most of all, good luck at the races on uh, another good summer weekend of racing good fields too good size fields so that's a good thing matt we'll be back next week right here on horse center travers week next week we'll see you then